welcome back to the Acne channel, Pretty Progress 23, aka Elizabeth here. This video is all about microneedling. As most of you know, my acne scars, hyperpigmentation has like done a 180 and it's improved so, so, so much. Now, um, I've been using the Banisher and the Banisher 2.0 for over a year now and I want to talk about the eight common mistakes that a lot of people do, myself included. When I started, I did a lot of mistakes and I'm owning up to it. I really want to share my experience with you guys and hopefully this helps if it does make sure you like the button below and definitely subscribe the first one is microneedling way too often there's this misconception that I used to believe too that the more you microneedle the faster results that you'll get but honestly that is all a myth you need to let your skin heal after you make those micro injuries into your skin so if you fail to let your skin heal all you're doing is causing a loss of collagen increasing the irritation and you're going to be prone to breakouts because it's like you're continuously injuring your skin and not letting it to heal all you're doing is worsening the state of your skin if you're using the original banisher your skin will need at least two weeks to heal whereas if you're using the banisher 2.0 your skin will need only one week to heal the the reason why this requires less downtime is because with the Banisher 2.0, the needles go straight down. But with the rolling, it doesn't enter your skin in a straight down angle. It actually sometimes go at an angle and it's not as like precise as the Banisher 2.0. So two weeks and this is one week and this is in regards to the 0.5 millimeters. If it's different needle size, that's a different story. Like the longer the needles are, it's most likely that you need a longer healing time. And it also depends like how well you know your skin. Sometimes people heal quicker than others, but minimum, honestly, two weeks and one week. Okay, so mistake number two is using the wrong needle size. When I first started out, I bought this needle, like it was 0.2 millimeters from Amazon. And I was like, yeah, this can totally help with my hyperpigmentation and acne scars. And I did it for weeks and nothing result of it because all it helped me was probably product absorption, but it didn't do much for my acne scars that were much deeper. So that didn't work. I reckon the most safest way to start off with microneedling is 0.5 millimeters, which Banish offers. So with the 2.0, that's 0.5 millimeters and it has done wonders for my hyperpigmentation, discoloration, as well as my little acne scars on my cheeks and my forehead actually. And also a lot of people think that the longer the needles, the better, but you gotta be really, really careful. Longer needles require greater downtime and you need to have like really skillful hands. You need to know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, definitely go to a professional. Um, your skin is very sensitive and, and you don't want to do anything rash. Mistake number three is using low quality derma rollers. Way too often there are like heaps and heaps of products out there online that are sold for so, so cheap. And you're probably wondering, hmm, why is it so cheap? But you buy it anyway because it's so cheap, right? That was my like mentality. I always thought that maybe I'm making, I'm getting a bargain out of this, but usually and often the case is that it's cheaply made, poor quality and needles are bent. The ones that I actually got, the, the very first time I tried microneedling was on Amazon and I saw something for like 10 bucks or whatever or, and I used it on my skin and then when I like, sh like looked at it closely, they were irregular like needle sizes and some were bent and I was just so disappointed in myself and I realized like my skin was really irritated. So definitely whenever you're looking for buying like microneedling tools, whether it be the roller or the stamp, look at the reviews, look at like what it's made out of. So the Banisher 2.0 is made out of titanium gold. So yeah, it's, you know, it's high quality and it's worth an investment when you know that you're putting great things onto your skin. Number four, definitely remember to use sunscreen right after derma rolling the next day or after eight hours if you're going outside. So if I was to derma roll at night or derma stamp at night, the next morning I'll apply my SPF of 30 onwards. So there's this misconception out there when you're sun tanning, your skin looks better and that's only temporary because in the long term run, they're actually aging your skin, causing you to form wrinkles faster and it increases your hyperpigmentation. It darkens the discoloration. So remember, sunscreen, 
SPF 30 plus is amazing for your skin. It keeps it young looking, it hydrates your skin, and it protects your hyperpigmentation from darkening. Step number five is a microderma rolling or derma stamping on your active pimples. So this is why I love the little banished stamp. When I had like cystic acne all over my cheeks, but I had, you know, some scars here and on my forehead, I used this little bad boy and it's absolutely amazing. So it's smaller than the Banisher 2. 2.0 but it's also 0.5 millimeters and I just use this to go around my pimples and it works very effectively but do not use any microneedling tool over active pimples cut wounds psoriasis um, eczema because your skin is still in that healing stage if you're stamping on your active pimples or areas that is wounded all you're doing is infecting your microneedling device or tool and you're spreading it around your face and you really want to avoid that completely i recommend you to just focus on your active acne if you have if it's severe acne i had to do that for a while and then you can start your healing stage with your microneedling tools or you can use a little one to go around your pimples if you can but if you know it's risky then don't do it and just like let your skin heal first and then work on your scars later number six is applying the wrong like serums or products right after your derma roll so when you microneedle you're creating these micro channels that allow like skin products and serums etc to seep in your skin five to twenty times more than it usually would this could be a good thing or a bad thing so first of all, if you're using tropical treatments such as benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid or like glycolic acid and stuff like that and it works for you before, don't do it right after microneedling because if it's seeping straight into your skin, it's most likely over exfoliating your skin and causing your skin to be super irritated. Depending on how active it is, minimum is 8 hours but when it comes to glycolic acid for example, because it's quite strong, you would probably want to wait at least 2 days to use it or you want to use it before you microneedle. Micro needle. So often I would use my Banish Pumpkin Mask just before a micro needle, and then so I put this on for 15 minutes, wash it off, and then I go in with my micro needling session, all good, and then two days later I can start this again. Also, you need to wait a minimum of eight hours until you can apply makeup because if you do apply makeup right after micro needling again, your makeup will seep into those micro channels and actually clog your pores and irritate your skin. So the right products that I would use is probably vitamin C serum. I personally go straight with the vitamin C cream. I absolutely love the Banish Vitamin C cream. It's just so gentle on my skin um, and you know that I use it for a very long time now. It's been a like over a year and honestly my skin feels supple and very very smooth. Number seven is rolling way too hard. Again, this is a really common mistake where people are so, myself included, are so desperate for like effective, effective results and I'm just like, <laughs> like press it down and, and harm my skin because I'm like, yeah, the more like micro needles and micro injuries that I use, like my skin's gonna heal like that. But no, all I'm doing is actually traumatizing my skin and you really wanna avoid that. Use moderate pressure for your skin. You're not meant to bleed like lots and lots of blood, you know what I mean? It's not like that vampire um, microneedling session that you do in clinics. At home, you shouldn't bleed. If you do bleed and it's just a little bit, that's fine. But you shouldn't be like pressing down into the skin and causing yourself to bleed on purpose. Cause girl, you are actually like, crazy you yeah you're actually just harming your skin even more and moderate pressure just does just as wonders for your skin and I've been doing that for a very long time now so I know and number eight the last mistake that a lot of people do is actually not replace the microneedling tool after a certain number of uses so this video I'm going to focus on the Banisher 2.0 this is made out of 24k gold plated titanium bristles so this means you can use it up to eight to ten times however with all needles and like all needles they tend to get dull and they might get bent because of the number of times that you use Using it so that's why you need to replace it 
you don't want to put bent needles into your skin. Even though you use alcohol to disinfect your banisher, over a number of times you don't know how bacteria can get into the needle or on the side of the needles. You've just got to be sure and you've got to replace the needles so that you know the needles are completely straight like an arrow. Um, with the old banisher, you have to replace it after four uses because it's not 24K gold plated titanium. And that's about it. So I hope this video has helped you. You can find me on my other social media channels such as Pretty Progress 23 on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And if you like this video or I've missed anything out, definitely comment below. So I'm sending you all my love and light. Bye guys.